Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Healthcare. In this program we have some tips and advice for you on how to stay healthy this summer. We begin with a new national study that finds a healthy lifestyle is key to preventing cancer. That's according to a new study in the latest journal of the American Medical Association. Researchers found that those who did not drink drank no more than one drink a day for women and no more than two drinks a day for men, maintained a healthy weight, and did two and a half hours a week of aerobic exercises got, um, that cut women's cancer cases by 41% and men's cancer cases by 63%. So now we turn our attention to what you can do to reduce your risk for mosquito and tick-borne diseases here in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Our first guest is an emergency care physician with the Urgency Room, Dr. Jim Stoll. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate that. So um, before we get into some of the more specific types of diseases that we see here from mosquitoes and ticks and things, and perhaps maybe even spiders, I don't know, mm -hmm. but what are some of the myths that you you hear all the time and what's the truth to some of these things? Well there are a lot of myths out there and, and one of the biggest ones is um, spider bites. Uh, a lot of people come into the urgency room and you know they think they've been bitten by a spider because they see a kind of a red area swollen, maybe painful, maybe itchy, um, but, but that's just not the case. I think spiders get a bad rap. <laughs> you know there's only, there's only two spiders in the United States that cause significant problems and that's uh, black widow and brown recluse, and neither one of those are uh, native to Minnesota. So, yeah, actually seeing those in the state is reportable. And and spiders are, you know, most of them are 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 docile. You know, they don't feed on humans, not like ticks and mosquitoes. And so, you know, they're not going to sneak up on you when you're sleeping and bite you. They're not. No, they're not. <laughs> um, you know, so they so they kind of get a bad rap. And and most of the people that come into the urgency room with what they think is a spider bite usually is a reaction to an insect, um, you know, a sting, something along those lines. More commonly, it's uh, a specific bacteria that infects the skin and causes abscesses. And bee stings and too. Bee stings too can can do the same thing. Yep, yep. And uh, and so a lot of them, you know, we worry about infection, and we end up seeing a lot of those in the urgency room and, and draining them uh, because antibiotics don't work very well if it's a collection of pus. Um, and so we have to um, drain them. Okay, so um, here, you know, we've heard a lot in the news lately with Zika virus and a concern, especially if people are traveling to some of the places like Puerto Rico and maybe mm -hmm. Central and South America and things. So there's, perhaps there could be some kind of a risk, but what are the things that you most likely see in the, in the urgency room with mosquitoes and tick-borne diseases? Well, in, in Minnesota, we, we worry about um, West Nile virus for mosquitoes. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, some people believe that mosquitoes are drawn to colors, they're drawn to certain foods, uh, they're drawn to certain blood types, and, and that's not really the case. They're drawn to carbon dioxide and they're, and they're drawn to warmth. Uh, so why is it some people get bit and other people, they can be right next I to them and not get I don't know, it can be scents, it could be something in the sweat. You know, usually mosquitoes are prefer bigger bigger people, uh, large men, and, and they prefer little children less just because of the mass and because of the carbon dioxide production and because of the heat. Um, but the, well, with mosquitoes, we worry about the West, West Nile virus. And not all mosquitoes are infected. Um, and about 80% of the time when, um, you know, when you, when you do get West Nile virus, it's, it's either, either there's no symptoms or there are very minor symptoms. About 20% of the cases, um, you get fever, headache, fatigue, muscle aches, sometimes uh, vomiting and diarrhea. And those can all be related to a mosquito bite. Yep, to a mosquito bite, to the West Nile virus. And then about 1% of people end up getting uh, encephalitis. And that's what we really worry about with West, West Nile virus is encephalitis. So if somebody comes in with fever, severe headache, confusion, you know, weakness on one side of the body or the other, then, then we get really concerned. Good advice there. So what about ticks? We have, you yep. know, we, we have Lyme disease here per, pretty prevalent in the we do. upper we, Midwest. We, we worry about ticks, um, and we, we worry about deer ticks or the black-legged ticks more than, more than deer ticks or dog ticks because they transmit uh, the organism that causes Lyme disease. And, um, and 
about 80% of the time, if you, do, if you do get a tick bite, and we see a lot of these in the urgency room, we remove ticks, and we can talk about that a little bit later, sure. removing ticks the appropriate way. Um, but about you know, 80% of the cases, if you do have Lyme disease, you're going to end up seeing a rash. And it's a, it's a bullseye type rash or a target looking rash. It, it starts out as a, a, ra a red raised bump and it spreads. Um, and then you get central clearing and it, and it looks like a target um, or a bullseye. And they can get pretty big. They can get up to grapefruit size or even bigger sometimes. Um, and then you know, the, the, the important thing about Lyme disease is, is recognizing it early because if you do, it's easy to treat with antibiotics. And what would those symptoms be that you would notice? Um, you get the rash at about, you know, a couple days to a couple of weeks, you'll get this target, target rash, and that's the easiest time to diagnose. And that disappears then after? That'll something? disappear, yep, that'll go away. And if, if it's not recognized, and, and it only happens in about 80% of the time, the other symptoms are kind of like West Nile virus. I mean, you can get headache, you can get fever, you can get muscle aches. Um, and then if it's, if it's not treated, if it's not recognized and treated, you can go on to have arthritis, heart problems, it can affect the nervous system. So uh, Lyme disease is an important thing to recognize and, and treat, and, and we do that all the time. In the, in the urgency room, we'll remove ticks. If, if you have any question about what kind of tick you know, if you come in and you see a tick on yourself and you, and you either can't remove it fully or you don't want to or you're worried about it being a, a deer tick, you know, come into the urgency room and we'll, we'll take a look. We'll remove it. We'll update your tetanus. We'll get you on antibiotics if we need so, to. So um, what is the best way to remove it if someone can do it or is it better just to come to the urgency room? Well, I saw room? it's, it's, you can try it at home if, if you know, we, we do it all the time in the urgency room. I saw a guy one time in the urgency room who uh, used a lighter. He tried to burn the tick off. <laughs> and the only thing he did was, was get himself. a second degree burn on his, on his leg. Oh, and no. so the tick was still alive. It was still attached. It was still feeding on him. So, uh, so I took it off. But the best way is to use a set of tweezers. There are products out there that will remove the tick uh, that you can buy. But, but the best way we've found is to use a set of tweezers, grab the tick as close to the skin surface as you can, and then provide gentle upward traction until the tick releases. And don't, don't grab the tick, don't twist the tick, you know, just uh, gentle pressure upwards. And, or, or come and, see you. <laughs> or come see us. And there is a myth that you need to remove all of the tick in order to decrease Lyme disease. And the, and the fact is that the tick needs to be on there for about 24 hours, sometimes more, okay. to even transmit the disease. And if you remove... Um, most of the tick, and you still have the head or, or parts in the skin, you don't want to do any more damage to the skin. So we'll remove it if, if it can be easily removed, but we're not going to dig it out because that can cause more damage to the skin, and, and we don't want to do that. And it's probably good to try to prevent getting these to begin with, right? Yeah, and so, so prevention is a big thing. So if, you're, you know, if, you, if you really don't want to be around ticks and mosquitoes, you can stay inside. But... In Minnesota, everybody wants to get outside and enjoy yeah, the weather. Sure. So there are products you can put on that, that have DEET. Those work the best. Um, and they're safe for kids as long as you apply them like they're directed on the, on the packaging. Um, and, and wearing long sleeves and long pants and tucking in you know, the sleeves and the pants. Um, bigger things, though, are, are checking yourself when you come in. Um, uh, and, and making sure there aren't any ticks on there because, it, like I said before, it takes 24, some 24 hours, sometimes longer for the ticks to actually transmit the disease. And so if you can find them, take a shower, wash them off. Um, uh, if, you know, we see ticks all over the all over I was going to say they're probably all over the body, right, not specific yep. areas. Yep, if stuff. you can imagine a place on the body, there's been a tick there. <laughs> um, and, so, and so checking in the shower is is important and you know making sure that that you don't have one there I have dogs and they bring ticks yeah, into the house too, yeah. all the time so you need to check your dogs there are times I'm sitting on the couch and a tick starts crawling up my oh arm my from my dog so you know and or when they'll leave you know there's a couple ticks on the on the sofa it's kind of gross but it <laughs> but it happens so you just need to be vigilant all right sounds good any other final advice about protecting you and your loved ones during this mosquito and tick season here yeah i, th I think just just being aware um if you develop you know f 
symptoms that you think are flu-like. And it's not influ flu is not in the summer months. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you're not. It's not influenza season now. So if you're if you're developing symptoms that uh, seem to be flu-like symptoms, it's it's a good idea to get checked out. And and you can come into the urgency room. We'd be happy to see you. Um, and you know, it's it's about recognizing the risk, minimizing the risk, and then recognizing the problem once it happens. And the urgency room located at several locations yep, around we're the in, Twin we're Cities. We're in Egan, we're in Woodbury, and we're in Vadnais Heights, and we're open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And oh. you can see a trained emergency physician, an emergency staff. Like yourself. In, yep, yeah. yep, in a clean, you know, efficient environment, um, and it, it's... We'd love to see you. And you can go online to see how long the waiting period is, too, I understand. You can, yep. You can go online and see what the expected wait time is. Well, great advice. It was a pleasure to meet you. We're Thank glad you to very have much. You with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, more tips and advice on how to stay healthy this summer. Stay with us. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Chiropractors believe that we have the healing potential within our own bodies by maintaining a healthy nervous system. And joining us is Dr. Thad Betzold with Vibrant a Chiropractic in Woodbury, who has extensive experience providing pediatric chiropractic care. So thank you for being with us. Absolutely. I'm it's our, I think our here. first time having a chiropractor on the show with yeah. us. So thank you. So what makes chiropractic care um, unique? What makes chiropractic care unique compared to any other facet of health care is that we go right to the source of the problem. And the source of the problem is the nervous system. We have a brain and a body, and they're connected via our nervous system, mostly through the spine. That's why we focus on the spine. And what happens when we focus directly on the spine, we go to the source of the problem. Many other uh, healthcare professions will cover up a symptom, but chiropractic is unique, and we go right to the source and fix the problem, and that's really what separates chiropractic. So how do you find out what the problem is? Yes, to uh, identify the problem, we use a number of means and uh, diagnostic criteria that are unique to the chiropractic profession. Um, namely in children, um, they're a little different than adults, but with children, um, we'll go deeper. Um, we've got some scanning technology, um, some orthopedic tests that we can identify what sort of shape that spine is in. And that's really how we, so to say, start painting the picture of this child's health or person's health where we can fill in the details and find out, say, what uh, the missing piece may be. So in addition to the medical doctor, why would um, parents bring a child or a baby to come see you then? Yes. Um, many of the parents that seek us out, um, they're drawn to us because we are a natural means of health care and we don't add anything to the body such as a medication. We don't take anything away from the body you know, such as a surgery, but instead we really work to remove the interference that is within the body and odds are it's going to be in the nervous system so that's why it's really important to identify so, those things. Yeah, maybe explain like so you find like an area that mm -hmm. blockage or there's, yeah there's blockage is blockage, a good word. I don't know the mm -hmm. correct term. So and then how do you release it? How do you get that nervous system working and maintaining healthy? Yes, um, whether it's a young young baby, a child, or a full grown adult, um, we we fix the problem via the chiropractic adjustments. And now what does the chiropractic adjustment look like? Well, you know, for a full grown adult, it looks a little bit different than with a child yeah, or I an infant. So. so we've got a number of different techniques and methods that we use. I can broadly categorize them uh, into three things. Uh, first being the traditional hands-on method. Uh, the second one is a gravity assisted technique. It's incredibly gentle, very, very specific. Uh, the third one we use, which is the one we use most common in uh, children, babies, is actually an instrument assisted technique 
and with an instrument we get a high, high degree of specificity and we can really identify and also when we're dealing with a, a smaller body, we're actually dealing you know, with a smaller surface area. So this instrument allows us to get a little more precise and stay on the area a little more than any other technique. And this would be perhaps maybe, it could be a well baby as well, but also yeah. someone's a fussy baby, there could be some problems with that. Yes, Not absolutely. Sleeping or... Yeah, difficulty sleeping, difficulty feeding, digestion, constipation, many, many things fall under the umbrella of chiropractic. And the reason being, of course, is and that because nervous system. the nervous system controls we just don't everything. Think about it that so much when the either. nervous system's not at 100 percent, no other function of the body can be at 100 percent either. You were telling me that you also treat um, children that maybe have ADHD. Yes, as well? ADHD is very, very unique, and uh, specifically with ADHD, as well as many other things, it starts with a very, very detailed history. And moms, especially, are great at remembering many, many details, and this is key. Uh, in our health history, in our office, we go all the way back to the birth, and even all the way back to the pregnancy, and we look for physical traumas, environmental traumas, um, even you know, emotional traumas that could leave lasting imprints in how the body functions, i.e. it's gonna show up in the wow. nervous system. Amazing. Um, I think we're about out of time for the interview, but briefly, if someone wants more information about this particular um, pediatric uh, chiropractic care or just information about Vibrant Chiropractic, yeah. they can reach you at um, the number. I think we're going to have that on the screen here. So Yeah, certainly, certainly. And uh, health really is a decision, and uh, always better to be proactive to proactive than reactive and summer is a great great time because we've got a little more time once kids are out of school and that. Well it was a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great information. So still ahead a local chef stops by to give us some tips on how we can stay healthy with the foods we eat. Stay with us. You're doing great. Let's just, we're going to try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Now joining us is Chef Jeremy Reinecke. He's with the Kitchen Table with, it's a mouthful, with the Healthiest Ways to Wellness on the Woodwinds Health Campus. So you did it. Right Excellent. next to the hospital there. And you're here to talk about how we can stay healthy with the foods that we eat. So what are we going to be doing here? Absolutely. So first, we want to just really kind of focus on the different colors that we have out here in front of us. That's really important when we're looking at increasing the nutrients uh, and the nutrient density in our diet. So as you can see here, we've got in front of us a lot of different colors. Um, that's really, like I said, what we want to start incorporating. And so, now's a great time, too, with all the farmer's markets. It's an amazing time in Minnesota right now. All the fresh right fruits Absolutely. and vegetables, yeah. Definitely. Hit up those farmer's markets. Um, see what's local, what's fresh. Get your hands on those guys and, and kind of play with them in your kitchen. I was going to say, and, and um, I should, by um, disclosure, I have taken a couple of your cooking classes and well-being cooking classes, and they were great, and I learned a lot. And one of them was on how you can keep yourself healthy by um, eating foods that are anti-inflammatory that can reduce um, inflammation in your body. Absolutely, and that's really important. That's one thing that we can all benefit from actually, is keeping that in, uh, chronic inflammation in check and, and eating the foods that will help us do that. So again, we're looking at you know those bright colored things to keep our, our gut health in line. Um, we've got some ginger here we're gonna work with today, super for the gut health. We've got some bright blueberries, the bright green and our cucumbers here. These things go really, really well together and help um, control that inflammation. So, so what do we got? We're actually going to put together a really simple, easy smoothie today, and um, I'm really excited about it. And I think we'll probably just dig right in, yeah? Uh, yep. Okay, Sounds excellent. Good. So I've saved a couple pieces here to kind of demo as well. And um, we'll run through the ingredients uh, real quickly as well. We've got uh, beet juice here, I've got some cucumber water, um, our uh, seedless cucumber, or um, excuse me, some um, coconut water, sorry about that, seedless cucumbers, some blueberries, we've got some chia seeds for some um, added protein and healthy fats, we've got some turmeric here, some ginger, 
an avocado and an apple. Wow, okay, that was a <laughs> lot of stuff. We saved a couple little things for us to prep, and I wanted to show you how to do a couple of those things, um, primarily because some people struggle with um, an avocado. So I want to show you real quickly. We're going to take this top off, just like that. We're going to then take our knife and kind of ride around the pit, because inside an avocado, we've got this pit right here. And then you make it than, look so easy. <laughs> it can be, it can be, right? A couple little tips. So rather than getting in here with a spoon and scooping that avocado pit out, just lay that guy down, tap your knife in there, and twist, and that guy will come Again, right out. Again, you make that look really yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of practice. Um, so now how do we get it out of the, the skin here? We're just going to take it in uh, quarters, just like this. And then I'm going to peel this guy just like that. Super easy. Wow. That's going to go right into my blender. And now, see, and I would be using like a little tiny paring knife or something, but yeah. taking his class, I've learned that you want to use the chef knife like that. Absolutely. We want to use essentially as few tools as possible, really. There's a ton of gadgets out there, and if you're a gadget collector, great. <laughs> Go ahead and grab each one. But this guy right here, the chef knife, can do a lot of those same tasks for you. Um, the next piece here is our apple. I wanted to show you really easily how to kind of remove the core from this apple. You don't have to go around and peel it. You'll also notice that we're keeping the peel on a lot of these things here. A lot of the nutrients live in the peel of the apple in the skin of this cucumber here. So leave those guys on in this I have instance. a question about cleaning them. Um, is water just okay? Absolutely. Water is going to be really good. There's a lot of uh, different you know, commercial vegetable cleaners out there. And I'm not going to say that they're necessarily a bad thing, but now we're introducing you know, more chemicals and things into our food. Um, water is a great option as well. Okay. Super. Um, so we're going to take our apple here, we're going to cut it in half. I'm going to use that flat side and then we're going to just quarter it like this. And then again, they sell apple quarters and you can use it if you want. But all I'm going to do now is at an angle, nip out that core on each quarter. Just like that. Because you want to save as much of the, yeah, absolutely. the apple as possible. Keep as much of that apple as possible. Again, we're leaving the skin on here. We're going to use a blender, a high-powered Vitamix blender today, and it's going to break down everything for us without any issues at all. So we're going to take this guy, and we're going to go right into our blender just like this You know, and well. I love smoothies, but I always feel like they're so high in carbs and calories, so I try to I avoid them for the most part. Sure, absolutely. And really it comes down, and they can be, and it comes down to nutrient density. And we talk a lot about that in the classes that we teach as well. Well, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the energy that food gives us, the, the kcals or calories, versus the nutrients or the good stuff that they bring, uh, bring to the party as well. Um, so you can actually eat a relatively you know, high uh, uh, calorie uh, diet or high calorie food as long as it brings a lot of nutrients and a lot of good stuff with it. Okay. So that's what we really focus on. And then of course, Moderation is always key, right? Yes. We don't want to go crazy on anything. Well, yeah, some drinks are like huge. Absolutely, right? So an eight ounce, 12 ounce kind of smoothie thing is going to be great. Which is the small. It is the small, <laughs> absolutely. Living in the world of super sized yeah. things, right? Um, so in our blender now, we're going to add our beet juice. Be careful with this beet juice, of course. If it gets on anything, it's, it's going to stain. stain. Yep, so be really careful with that. We're going to add our coconut water here as well. And why coconut water instead of just regular water? Because it's good. Because <laughs> yeah. it's good. Of course. Right? You could absolutely swap that out for just regular water. You could use a coconut milk. You could use um, an almond milk. Uh, there's no really you know, strict rules here. Okay. So play with this. Have fun with this. And I brought this along too just to kind of show you. So this is a coconut. Oh. And I also brought this guy just for fun. I'm not going to do it today. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, but this cleaver, we could um, harvest the coconut water out of this guy. And you can buy these commercially as well if you wanted to kind of play with this. But I bought ours. Um, yeah, I think I think that'll here. be my route too. <laughs> I think it will for most people. Yep. Um, so we've got our liquid in here. We've got our um, avocado, our apple. We're gonna go with our uh, cucumber. No, those smell great. They smell awesome, mm -hmm. don't they? Really, they bring a little bit of sweetness as well. We're gonna go with our blueberries, Love our ginger, this. and all I did was um, peel this guy and just kind of slice it up because. Oh, okay. Don't ever, if you read a recipe and it says mince, finely mince it, and then put it in the food processor, put it in the blender, why would you do that, right? Let the blender do the work, okay? okay. So just peel it. We're going to go right in there with that guy. Then we're going to go with our chia seeds. And if you don't have a high-powered blender, you might want to put those chia seeds in a uh, spice mill okay. or a coffee grinder first. Otherwise, really it might jam them. them. It could. Well, they just won't break down as well. Um, and then our last ingredient here is our turmeric. And we know it contains curcumin, which is... Um, a phenomenal, huge player in the world of anti-inflammation and, and gut health. So I try to sneak this into a lot of different things. It brings a little kind of earthiness to the party, um, but nothing that's really overpowering. 
Okay. So we've got. Can, can we make this recipe available to our viewers? Absolutely. As well? Yeah. Okay. We'll get that up. We'll get okay. that up for you. Um, and then, so we've got all of our ingredients in here. We're going to go ahead and pop the top on. And I always like to start slow. If you have a variable speed uh, blender, start on low and then bring it up. And you want to spin it as um, kind of as little as possible because that blender does generate heat in the form of friction, and we, we want to keep that to a minimum. So look at that. Guy. Wow, that looks great. Oh my gosh, can you smell that? Oh yeah, it oh. smells great too. So bright, beautiful color. Again, that beet juice is in there. Be careful, don't um, spill it, or it will make a huge mess. I've got my little glasses garnished right here, all ready for us with a little slice I of love, our cucumber. Like, cucumber and water. Yes, yeah. like infused. It's so refreshing. It yeah, is beautiful. Yep. So we're going to go right in our glass with this guy, and I'm splattering just a little bit. But we've got that bright green, the bright red in our glass. Isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. What do you think? Should we try it? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, the one class I took, you had a mango smoothie that was yes, delicious that with was, bananas. and. Yep, that was my anti-inflammatory smoothie. Well, to your health. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Mmm, that's really good. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Really good. Oh, there's a little bit of texture in there, and again, you could spin it a little bit no, longer I like it. to adjust that as well. But you know, and what I like about I don't typically like beets. Mm -hmm. Beets, you know, like as a whole beets. Whole beets, sure. but that tastes really, really it's good. Really nice. Beets do have a natural um, sugar in them, a natural um, sweet sweetener or sweetness. Mm -hmm. Um, so that kind of lends itself really well. Some people think that beet might be a little bit unusual to add to a, um, a uh, otherwise fruit smoothie, but I think it works out. I think it works out really well in this one. And so it's so important that it, what, what we are what we eat. And Absolutely. that's so important to get the, like the fresh fruits and vegetables in the part of a regular diet. Most and definitely. And that's one of the things that um, we really work hard on imparting to our, our customers at um, Health East and at Ways to Wellness is that we need to eat a variety of foods. A lot of these um, kind of flash in the pan diets are very restrictive and therefore not very sustainable. So mm -hmm. we really... Um, uh, take a moderation approach and a, a broad variety to foods approach. Yeah, and at the top of the newscast of our program, we were talking about how, um, you know, eating healthy can also help you prevent getting cancer. Absolutely. Cancers the, and you do have some classes coming up this summer? We or? do, yes. We just put out um, our um, Q3 or quarter three publication, and that's going to be right here. It's available online at Health East, um dot org slash ways to wellness. I think we'll have that up shortly here. And some of the classes, basically, what are they? Yeah, what are you so offering? Um, the one that we are really proud of is our um, Cook Well series, and it's a four-part series. We meet once a week. And um, Which that's is the one, that you took. one of them yep. I had taken, yes. That's, that's the one that you took. And um, so we focus on our food philosophy in the first session. Um, we focus on knife skills as part of that series. We focus on proper cooking techniques. Um, and we also focus on then um, the anti-inflammatory piece, something that we can all benefit from. So if they want to take one of these classes, I would recommend them. And yeah, they were fun. I, my husband actually took one with me, yep. so it was great. Awesome. Final advice for our viewers about eating healthy and how that can help you stay healthy. Absolutely. So again, anti-inflammation. Eat, you know, eat the rainbow. We've heard that before, right? Walk through the supermarket. Find something new, something unique, something bright and colorful. Take it home and try it out. Just explore kind of all of the things that are out there. Well, Chef Jeremy, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a pleasure to be this here. This is great. Absolutely. And we'd like to thank you for joining us. Hope you'll join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.